hello everyone welcome welcome back to my channel it's your girl caroline over here looking spicy with the red Ooh, i'm sorry i'm just i just look too good sorry let me focus it's the hair today's video i'm gonna be showing you guys start to finish exactly everything i had to do to get this wig from out of the box to looking right out of the scalp In true caroline fashion this is gonna be a detailed in-depth video so you know sit down relax grab your cup of tea and let's get into today's video the wig we'll be working with in today's video is from Megalux Hair Company. This is a 28 inch wig body wave 13 by 4 HD frontal and it is a red dyed wig from them because y'all I cannot dye hair. Every colored wig you ever see me wear is always going to be a pre-colored wig unless I start learning how to dye hair. For customization, the only thing I did to this unit was I went ahead and plucked it. I did not bleach the knots. I feel like bleaching the knots on red wigs sometimes can be a hit or miss. And until I find a routine that actually makes a difference, I just go ahead and, you know, pluck the wigs and leave bleaching out of the matter. So as far as plucking, the hairline itself was very already pre-plucked. I feel like it was a very thin, naturally thin hairline. I really liked it. I didn't have to do too much plucking. It was about 15 minutes on both sides. Here I'm just using my hot comb to really just press out the hairline nice and back. I feel like it's really important to make sure you press out your hairline so you can really get the knots and the roots of the hair standing up straight so they come out a lot easier and it helps give you a more neat finish when you're plucking. I have my hot comb on 500 degrees Fahrenheit. It's important to have your hot comb hot. But not burning hot, we can burn a hole, but damn near hot enough. And I got mine from Amazon. Another note I wanna make, I am plucking my wig on a white piece of tissue paper, the tissue paper that comes in the packaging of the wig. I like to pluck my wigs upon something white. This really just helps me see the knots a lot better. This is a tip I learned when watching Arrogant Tay and how he plucks his wig, and I swear to y'all, it has been a game changer in my plucking game. Another tip that I learned from watching Arrogant Tay's video, I watched his masterclass video, probably like a year old and this video really like gave me a lot of useful tips so another thing he said that he does not pluck his wig starting from the front of the hairline and i literally started doing this and i promise y'all i've had a whole lot less balding and bald spots so no matter how thick the wig is if it comes pre-plucked or not i always pull out the first line of hair since this unit was more on the thinner side and had some pre plucks going on i plucked out a little bit more than the first line but just like i started to pull the hair out to where it was the most dense and to pluck my wigs, I like to use a slant tip tweezer. I specifically use this slant tip tweezer from Revlon. It is a Revlon Men's Diamond Series slant tip tweezer. I get mine from Target, Amazon, sometimes CVS, but they also have it on Amazon. It's really important to get a good pair of tweezers that you like to use. Not all tweezers work the same. Some can be too blunt and you're not pulling the knots out perfectly, or some can be too sharp and you're poking a hole. So try different tweezers out and find one that works best for you. Before I start plucking, I always like to make sure my wig is parted in the middle. It doesn't matter when we're going to be styling the wig in the middle. I just find that plucking the middle part when you're not supposed to just really ends up messing up your whole final result, especially if you do plan on wearing your wig in the middle. So I always just make a part in the middle and section off the other side. This also helps you work some section, which makes it more easier to handle. All right, now let's get into the actual plucking. I kind of slow down these first few clips just so you can really see what I'm doing. So I always start plucking away from the middle part, so like a line away from it. And when I'm plucking, I like to make sure I am pulling the hair out from the roots. You are pulling out those knots, okay? So I pluck a line, skip a line. Like I pluck one space, skip a space. As you can see, I'm kind of like creating little gaps, like, you know, like you can see like little gaps I'm creating between a piece, like a couple lines of hair. So you're basically kind of like creating little gapage and spaces between each little strands of hair. It's a little bit thick here in the back section, which is okay. It's okay to have them. I feel like it's okay to have gaps a little bit this big if you're plucking in the back of the hairline because the hairline in the back is a lot thicker than the front. But please do not have the gaps this wide when you're plucking in the front, which I will show you guys after I finish plucking the back of the hairline. Another thing to mention is when I'm plucking, I'm doing my tweezer in a back dragging motion. Like I'm not plucking my tweezer as if I'm plucking a hair, like a chin hair. You know when you're plucking a chin hair, you pull downwards. No, I'm really like trying to like brush back. Like I'm gliding backwards with my tweezer and getting a hold of those knots from the roots. And I'm also not just plucking in the same spot. Like now if you can really notice, my tweezer is going even further back in the hairline. I'm no longer at that 
front place that I was. So you can't pluck in the same area. If you're, if you're continuously plucking the same spot, you're gonna get a bald spot. So the way I do it is going down the hairline, I go pluck a line, skip a line. Once I've like plucked down a column, I mean a row, I just start to make more gaps in between. So like now you see my tweezer, it's even like deeper in the hairline and I'm creating more gaps. And I'm not creating this gaps in the same place. If you're creating the same gaps in the same area, you're making a bald spot. Like these are like random gaps that I'm creating throughout the hairline. It has to be random so it looks like a naturally thinned out hairline. How much plucking you have to do can really vary on the type of wig you have, how thick it is, how dense the frontal is. This wig wasn't that dense in the frontal. It was very thin, I didn't have to pluck much at all. So for me, I feel like what helps me figure out, it's really just about knowing visually what you're going for what i used to do is i would get like a little pinterest or instagram inspo of someone like a professional arrogant whoever someone's wig like their plucked hairline wig i'll probably insert a photo reference and when i'm plucking i try to like try my best to thin the hairline as best as i can to make it look like that that's why it's really important to make sure you have your hairline pressed and slicked back like i even use my hands right now while i'm plucking to pull back the hairline nice and tight so i can really see if it's going to look like you know that scalp that's giving on my pinterest inspo photo last advice i'd give when it comes to plucking is less is more especially when you're doing like a pre-customization on the mannequin head you don't have to pluck her to perfection right now you can definitely do a decent job and once you do your install you can pluck more because that's when you know exactly what you need to do because it might look like oh it's not over plucked right now on the mannequin and you put in your head and you're like damn what did i do so under pluck if you need to even these days i under pluck all the time because i be over plucking okay now that i've plucked the front of the hair i mean the back of the hairline i'm combing everything back and i'm going to go again with my hot comb press it all back so i can see what we're doing and then i do the same thing pluck a line skip a line but for the front i make the gaps a whole lot smaller i guess a better term is i make them thinner they're not as wide as the gaps in the back and I pluck a whole lot less, especially given that this hairline is slightly pre-plucked. I really try to do the bare minimum when it comes to the front because that's when you can easily mess up. If I need to do more plucking, I save that for my post installation. And just like that, we are done plucking this side of the wig. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side off camera and come back. Now that I'm done plucking both sides, the last little pre-customization step I like to do, especially since I knew I wanted to wear this wig in the middle part, is I'm gonna go ahead and just clean up the middle part. I like just like, you know, plucking and pressing out the middle part pre on the wig head, especially for someone like me who can't like really get a good straight line, this is just a lot easier. So here I'm just trying to like part out the line as best as I can and I'm going to use my tweezers to just pluck it out and make it a little bit wider. I feel like having a slightly wide, not like, you know, wide load, you know, part the seas, Moses style type of wide, but like, you know, just a little bit wider can really make your look look like, you know, just very laid. I don't know, it just does something. Here I'm just going in and pressing out the roots as well to make everything nice and flat when I install it. There was lots of flyaways on the wig, so I used some of my Care Care wax stick to just help tame down those flyaways as well. Once I have the hairline all pressed out, I just like to go in and you can't really see this on camera, but when you're, whenever you're plucking the middle part, you're trying to pluck a straight line, I like to like really zoom my eyeballs into the lace and you'll notice like, like a row of grids. And I just try to like stay on just one row of grids when I'm going down and just pulling the knots out from there. For this wig, I actually did two rows it, probably right now because you can't see it on camera it doesn't make sense but whenever you're plucking your middle part or a part in general just really look at the grids on the wig and just follow those lines and pluck in there and that's how i've managed to like pluck straight and of course make sure you're pulling each of those knots out right from the roots because if the root is showing it's not going to look as clean you want a super clean look for this part now i will say disclaimer this sometimes can cause a hole in your wig depending on how tight or how big those knots are if you have a hard time pulling out the knots without causing a hole just stop it's okay like trust me it's not worth ripping your wig in half for getting that perfect middle part because trust me i have done that we can just use concealer and other little tips and tricks to help finesse a wig that can't be plucked easily here she is fully plucked and roots pressed out. And you can see she's ready to be installed. 
So for installation, first thing first, we gotta tint our lace and I'm just going to tint the lace using my Maybelline Fit Me Poreless Foundation. I use the shade 356 Warm Coconut. I always tint my lace no matter what type of lace it is, HD, transparent. I just feel like it just helps me get my exact shade match. I prefer using foundation or concealer or even a cream pressed powder instead of just like a loose powder because I just feel like it has more coverage and it sticks to the lace better. To make sure everything dries up, I'm using my blow dryer just to you know, make sure I'm not going to have any makeup slipping and sliding and messing up with the spray I'll be using later. Just cutting off that additional lace in the back and for this install, I try not to do a wig cap. I feel like I've not been really wearing wig caps a lot these days. Even when I did wear wig caps, they were mainly just to protect my braids. My braids, they so old, they do not need no protecting, okay? They're on their last leg, but it's okay. I'm getting my braids and my hair all refreshed and washed before the new year. Thank goodness. But now I got the wig on and secure. So you can see the middle part is right there. So installation is about to be very easier and more straightforward. I'm going in with some wig clips just to push everything back. I find just using clips and keeping everything in place really just makes me get less stimulated or stressed out. I feel like whenever I have the hair all over the place, I just start to get stressed and the install just gets real messy. I'm using my scissors to just kind of carve around my ear tabs. I do have a very detailed in-depth video on how to cut off the, the lace around your ears. I know that can be very tricky, so do check that out if you want to figure out detailed step-by-step -step how to do that. Once I have, now I'm just going ahead and cutting the lace into sections. I usually just like, you know, do a section in the middle, do a section on both sides to break it into like, I don't know three pieces i just found like doing it laying down your lace in sections works a lot better it's just more easier to handle and you can make sure you're not getting any lifting because you're literally being more detailed i've realized the more detailed and more attention you pay to the little things in your install the better it comes out So it is a more temporary hold than actual glue, but I use this because it is just more gentle on my edges and it comes off easily with water without me losing my hairline. I am using a eyebrow razor to cut off the lace first. Eyebrow razors are great for cutting off your lace because it gives you more of a jagged cut, which just kind of lays more naturally upon your skin. If you don't have them and you're using scissors, try to cut an up and down motion because cutting straight across is just gonna make the wig have like this line of demarcation that's very obvious upon your head. Once I have cut off that section of lace, I'm spraying under because it's the sides. I can spray under for the sides and I spray a nice amount, but not too much. And I just sprayed into my eyes. Nice. That did burn, not gonna lie. It's okay, we move. Now to help lock everything down, I feel like using your blow dryer to dry up that hairspray is what really gets my wigs to be melted into my hairline. For my sides, I like to pull out my side tabs in this Part of the hair installed so i can really have something to pull down the lace with and here i'm just using my comb to really just flatten out the lace and really just get it to stick to the glue in the hair and the skin all of that and i'm using my blow dryer on a medium heat medium power so it's on the highest power or the highest heat and i'm just pushing all of that in like i said attention to detail is key when it comes to a good install so i noticed some little pieces of lace that were not sticking down that were sticking up so i sprayed them again with a little spray and i always make sure i'm trying to spray to the lace not the hair so i'm spraying onto the lace and i'm going back again with the whole blow dryer plus comb situation to just kind of like press those little pieces out like i get really up and close with my mirror to make sure i am pressing down every piece of lace that i can see that's how you get that melted look now that I've finished off with that side, I'm going to go ahead and go do the middle section of the hairline. And here I've been doing this thing where I create like a bit of a widow's peak because I feel like sometimes the wigs come down a little bit too far down for my natural hairline. You don't have to do this. This is something that as somebody who's been installing wigs for so long, you be getting bored, you start trying new things. Yeah. So if you're a beginner, you don't have to do this. But if you want to be a little extra, yeah. I like how the widow peak look looks. To create my widow peak look, I'm just trying to like drag out some hair in a diagonal way. If you've looked at a widow peak hairline, it comes to a little point in the front. So starting from where like the first curve of the hairline is on the side, I try my best to draw a symmetrical as possible 
diagonal line going forward to kind of create a little triangle peak in the front. See, at first I chickened out on the widow's peak. I was like, nah, bro, you're going to mess it up because I just, you know, underestimate myself sometimes. But after, as you'll see, I cut off the lace right here to proceed to do regular spray down. I was like, no, 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 no. This hairline, it was coming down too far on me. I definitely feel like I lost my forehead. So I went ahead and jumped the gun and did the, the widow peak look after all. And I'm glad that I did because the final look, mm, 10 out of 10. Once I figured out where I wanted the hairline to be shaped, the best way to do this is if the knots are easier to come out easy, is just to literally yank it out like this. Well, this is actually the second way best to do this. The first best way to do this actually is to use nair in pre-production and do that and let the nair naturally let the hair fall out. But if you're a barbarian like me and don't feel like doing hair, you can just go ahead and just try to like pull the hair out because the hair does need to come out from the root for, like I said, for it to be clean. If you have knots left, if you do this, the hairline's gonna look just like, it's not gonna look very neat and it's not gonna lay naturally. So here I'm just using my razor to kind of like buzz off the extra pieces that do have knots that are left because like I said, this is only gonna look very clean and natural if you get the hairs out from the root. So honestly, the best way to do this is to use Nair, but I was being lazy, so I did it this way. But now you can see, I got me a nice little natural widow's peak going on here. I'm just trying to cut off as much excess lace and excess knots that are left behind to really give me a clean, natural look. I find it's best to cut off as much lace as you can for you to have a very much what lace look. So I always say there's no hair on that piece of lace. Like if it's a bald piece of lace, girl, cut it off. Like what are you doing? Saving it for something? <laughs> I'm kidding, but you get what I'm saying. Once I have made sure I've cut off as much lace as possible, I am going back again with that ebon spray and just laying down the rest of the hairline. Once everything has been nice and sprayed down, I'm going in with an elastic band to kind of just hold and let the hair simmer a bit. Sometimes not everything is like fully properly set and especially if you plan on doing baby hairs, you want to take a moment to let it just sit under an elastic band for a few, probably like five to 10 minutes, as long as you can honestly before you start doing the baby hairs because baby hairs will cause lifting. I just take this time to, you know, sing my heart out, drink some tea, because y'all know it's definitely 3 o'clock in the morning when I'm doing this, so that's going to keep me awake. And if I can't have you, no one not the best idea this yeah, that song has me in a chokehold, but after I sing my heart out, I am ready to go ahead and get these baby hairs done, okay? So for my baby hairs, I feel like... I just can never do a proper speaking tutorial for them, but I did recently make a detailed slow down in depth tutorial on how to do my baby hairs if you're interested in that. Because for this video, yeah, visually, I hope y'all learn. Love you. Because this is going to be the one part of my tutorial today that's not going to be super detailed and in depth. So let's get into it. What I do whenever the lace gets a little bit hard, not the lace, but the hair gets a little bit hard from the spray, I just gently like, you know, comb it out because it does like flake out easily. But if it's like a lot and it's really stuck, just get some water on your brush or like on a napkin and just use that to soften the hairline up and just brush the hair and break it out of the cast. But once I get the baby hair shape that I want it out, I'm using some of the ebon spray again to just spray it in between the hair and the lace, that little gap right there. This just kind of helps keep the hair down because you need the hair to be nice and flat for it to look like some proper baby hairs. Once I have that portion of the baby hairs pulled out and sprayed down, I am going in with the same brow razor that I used to cut off the lace and I'm just going to go do a little jagged cut on the 
baby hairs as well i always like to start by cutting it like right at my eyebrow as like a gauge but for sure i do cut them down smaller but i start as like the top of my eyebrow as like a starting point for cutting them down and here i'm just going in with my mini flat iron from amazon it's super tiny these are great for just helping you like get a more fluffier or just or just makes them curl a lot better in my opinion it's not a necessity but it does help I like to make sure I curl mine under and the tighter the curl the better it's just you might burn yourself but look you got to do what you got to do for the look for the baby hairs I like to use eco styler gel to help lay them down and this is the part of the tour where you know <laughs> I dip and let y'all just enjoy the visuals and hopefully that makes sense but don't worry like I said I have a super detailed talk through video where I explain how to do my baby hairs if you're more interested in that so I'll be back after I finish my baby hairs Once I was done with the baby hairs, it went ahead with that same elastic band just to hold everything down. Just also keeps the baby hairs in place. And now I'm going to go ahead and get into the styling portion of the hair. For the styling portion, I feel like this whole video just somehow became Eric and Tay theme because I'm telling you tips I learned from him. And the style I was recreating was a look I saw he did on Ari. This like red wig with like these body wave curls. It was so cute. It's on my Pinterest hair, hair inspo board, yes. I have a Pinterest hair inspo board. That's how I keep up with all these styles because you can only install a wig so many ways. Anyways, so I knew I wanted to do some loose body wave curls. And from the looks of the video, it looked like he did some light layering, some light long layers. So I'm just going ahead and adding some long layers on the hair as well as just going and cutting off the ends to make it nice and neat at the bottom. I feel like the ends sometimes of the wigs can be a little bit um, thin and you don't want any straggly ends, especially if you're gonna be curling the hair. Having clean, blunt ends with a little bit of layers in it kind of just makes the curls flow a lot better. To curl the hair, I'm using a one and a half inch curling iron. This one is from Hot Tools. I'm still trying to get used to using curling iron specifically, so the tutorial on this is going to be more of a learning, we're learning together type of thing. Here, before I start curling the hair, I'm just trying to like bring the hair down forward because from what I saw in his install, the wig was super flat towards the front and I feel like whenever you want your curls to like fall on your face a certain way, you kind of need to have the hair to fall down forward instead of to the side. But of course, I still want my roots to be pressed up, so I'm also making sure I'm pressing up the roots and not making it super flat to the side, if that makes sense. To prep my hair for the heat, I'm using this Avion NYC heat protectant slash hair serum. And I also do use some of my Garnier Fruits Heat Sleek and Shine serum, but I use that off camera. And these are just kind of to help give the hair some shine and to protect it from heat. I have the curling iron set to 380 degrees. And like I said, I'm still a beginner when it comes to using a tong type of curling iron i mainly like using flat iron to get my curls but i did buy this on an impulse so i just like to make myself use it every once in a while because i feel like the more i use it the more i'll get used to using it but to help you visually learn what i'm doing i am starting off on my left side because your hand positioning is different for each side so i'm starting off with my left and i'm trying to have the curls curl away from my face and once I get the curl on there I'm doing pin curls to, I did notice the hair doesn't hold the curl that well so I feel like pin curls will give the hair longer time to cool giving it a more better chance of holding disclaimer not really but visually if you're watching this and trying to understand how to use a curling iron just kind of like pay attention to the direction I'm opening the curling wand and the direction that it's going like if I'm either if I'm holding it up or downwards 
but once I figure out exactly how to precisely use this curling iron with a tong situation, I can use curling one in a flat iron to do my curls. But once I figure out how to use this, don't worry, I will give y'all a very detailed tutorial on that. You know I got y'all. I can't remember nothing to bitches just flowing from London. The thing I remember, they calling me daddy. The mansion was covered in money. I went to sleep with my jewelry and chains on. Had to wake up and week out the money. I got a bitch, she gon' kill for real. Talking about Clyde and Bunny. Do it with the kid, cop it. Got to pull up with a stick, stop it. Stop it. Rich nigga shit, solid. Rich nigga, oh, I need fuck this body. Got it. I go to space with the stars. I smoke a blunt on my pilot. Saturn, moon, earth, and Mars. NASA take off with the racket. Half a million on the necklace. Young rich niggas we successful. successful. Say she wanna feel special. What? And Coco make her feel special. Coco. I kinda honey the better. My honey. Back into honey the better. Two hundred. I might go put all my chains on. I just might change up the weather. Change. She pop a perk and pussy wet on drill. I met the bitch at Coachella. Coachella. If she knew tell her, she probably do better. But can I get an E for ever? E. I pray to God and wash my sins. God, the form the gifts me not a weapon. No weapon. I ask him where do I begin? Where? Devil trying to take my blessings. My blessings. They don't know the meaning of the white. Nah. You don't really live this life. No. Niggas in the hood shoot twice. <laughs> Say my niggas in the hood shoot precise. <laughs> Real wise, we ain't taking no advice. Nah. I realize that these hoes ain't right. All right. Don't even ask if they know what's the price. Right. Ain't got a snow day, already know it's white. I thought the God cause I been baptized. baptized I got mob tied to the north side, north side. Look with the sticks on them niggas straight slimes They gon' make the north side high crime no. And I hit a lit with these niggas dropping 10 huh? Hit a lit with these niggas dropping time Looking on the friend, I'ma break her back in Looking at the watch, I can't waste time Take, take, take off Woke up this morning, can't remember nothing Two bitches just flowing from London Two bitches. The thing I remember, they called me daddy The mansion was covered in money I went to sleep with my jewelry and chains on I had to wake up Makeup to kind of give the hair a longer time to really just set and cool because like I said I felt like this hair wasn't holding the best of a curl I should have also sprayed some hairspray in here but sometimes I'd be scared of using hairspray because I don't want my curls to be crunchy but I should have because y'all see right now the curls are all nice cute and bouncy and springy as I took them down but literally once I ran my fingers through it I wanted more of a loose look they definitely got loose all right but that's fine because I was kind of feeling this more looser look as well. It wasn't exactly what I was going for, but it was still just as cute. A win is a win. You feel me? So to kind of just help me preserve the shape that I have before losing that as well, I'm using my um, Got To Be Hairspray to kind of just set the hair in a certain shape. Like as you can see right here, I'm just kind of like folding certain pieces behind and creating little curves and dip in the hairline and I just kind of like use the hairspray to pinch everything and keep that little shape that I want around my face in place. And I also use the spray to spray the top of my hair to kind of just get rid of any flyaways. Got to be is a great finishing hairspray in my opinion. To make my top nice and flat, I'm just using my um, curling wand here. I like using a curling wand sometimes with a hot comb to press the top. It just makes it really nice and flat. You can see me, I'm already here feeling myself like, okay, get it girl, get it. <laughs> and to really just like finish off this look to give it that arrogant finesse look, I'm using this lighter shade concealer. And it's like the concealer that I use for under my brows. I'm just using that to pop right in the middle. Some might say it's too light, it's too much, but look, it's my install. I like what I like, and I like this. It, I feel like it just does something. It just makes the install dramatic, but in a natural way to me, okay? But that's really it for the look. Like, I was really, I wasn't going for this, but at the same time, I was going for this. Like, I'm feeling it. This is one of my favorite looks. I feel like it's perfect for the holiday season. It's just so cute. With that said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something. I hope it was helpful, or at least I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you guys in another one. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And peace out, Girl Scouts. Goodbye.